So we've used Tinkercad to generate the circuit and we simulated it to make sure it works. And then we put it over into Fusion, which used to be called Eagle. And that, uh, what that did is uh, allowed us to generate the PCB, so the printed circuit board. And then we used the CNC machine to isolation cut or mill around all the tracks. Now, theoretically, these tracks should not be touching the outside track. So I take out the multimeter and I'm gonna turn it to the continuity part and I'm gonna select it until I've got that little icon there, which simply means that it will beep if the connection's made. Okay, so that and that should not touch. And the reason they shouldn't touch is because that was the outside and that was isolated. So now I'm gonna put it on here and... Okay, so there is a problem here that I need to look at. I can see where it is. It's there, there's a little bit of um, burr. Okay, that one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. That's good. That's good. That's good. So it's just, that one is the problem. I believe it's there, that area there. And you can actually see a tiny bit of copper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a knife, a little craft knife or a tweezer or a sharp edge and I'm just going to scratch that through and just um, make sure there's no connection between the two. And now you can see that was the, the problem area. Okay, remember that this is what we want and this is the mirror image of that. These two dots here, well that's positive and negative so positive and negative are there. We know that that is pin one, so I'm just gonna put pin one there, so that'll be just one, and I'll put a circle around it. I know that a resistor is going here, so I can even do the resistor, and I know that my potentiometer's there, and I also know that that is my LED, so I can even do right LED and plus on that side. I've got a uh, capacitor here, and that capacitor is going on that side there. And I've also got another resistor that goes across there. So that is my, I believe it was my 10K resistor, which meant that this resistor was my 470 ohms, and that resistor was connecting to the LED. Um, so that should have been, if we remember, connecting to my output, which of course is pin three. This was a 10 microfarad um, capacitor, and that was, um, I think it was 100K or something. Um, I'm not actually gonna solder directly to the 555, so I'm gonna use a chip holder. Now the chip holder, this one, still has the notch, which is at the top, so I will place that in the correct way and that just goes in as flush as you can make it. The chip holder is now in place and the legs are protruding from the track just slightly. There's the 470 uh, resistor. 470 is gonna go all the way through until that's flush as well. And now you can splay those ones out. The capacitor, remember that line there is negative. Long leg positive. So long leg through the positive and the other one obviously through that side. And again, you keep it really flush if you can. LED, exactly same thing. Long leg going through the positive, short leg flat side going through the other one, negative. Stick up a little bit higher than the capacitor because I'm gonna try and make that box for it another time. And then once that's in place and you're happy with that, you can splay those legs out as well. We've got the trimmer. Okay, so that's everything in place. And now what I'm gonna do is solder it down. So get your soldering iron to a decent temperature. If you have trouble soldering this, and you're gonna have to clean the, um, the actual copper. To do that, use a wire wool and just um, give it a little scrub. And that will actually take some of the laminate off it and um, 
any of the grease, uh, which is a good idea. And with this one, it's more important to really use less solder because you don't want to bridge that track. Remember those isolation uh, grooves are very, very thin and it only takes a tiny bit of solder to drip over it and you'll have to keep checking it. And we will check it, we'll check it through a magnifying glass at some point just to double check. So here it crosses over, you can see it's crossing over and it crosses over the isolation there as well. So what we do now is we will trim the uh, legs off. Um, what we can see is this part here has definitely crossed over. Okay, so the next part is to actually take those and clean them up. To desolder we can use the uh, solder syringe. So we heat it up in the socket, but that's it's quite brutal and that's going to just take all the solder away and I'm going to have to redo it. Or we can use wick. And you can see that the, it's starting to absorb, um, soak it up. And you be careful holding the wick because it does get very, very hot. Okay, so the last part is just to put the chip in. So that just follows the notch for notch, as it were. And by using the chip holder, you can see that the soldering iron has never touched that chip. Okay, so we've definitely got the flashing working. Uh, can I change the speed using the variable? And I think you can see that that is changing. And so uh, that's it, from simulation to actual